What do you expect that could change your strategy? What do you expect that could you know, um, push you to make moves in the portfolios that you manage? So we're certainly going to be listening very closely to everything Chair Powell has to say virtually tomorrow. But the July FOMC minutes really kind of stole the thunder as it relates to learning more about the asset purchase tapering, which we expect to begin by January of next year. Uh, so when I think about the taper, there's a lot of consensus that seems to be forming and has already formed around starting by the end of the year, cutting uh, proportionally both treasuries and agency mortgage-backed securities. So in my mind, I'm actually already looking forward to the September FOMC meeting. I think that, that could be even more informative because in that meeting, we're going to get the 2024 dots. And when people ask me why are yields so low right now at uh, 130 on the 10-year yield, I say the market is very skeptical that not that the Fed can taper, they can taper, but can the Fed actually raise rates? Can they raise rates more than a few times? And can they get to a terminal rate that's above 2%? And that 2024 dot is going to give us more information to try to understand that. Mm. Kelsey, Kelsey, when it comes to the taper, I feel like a lot of people are starting to say, OK, it's it's a done deal. Timing will be a bit of an issue and you're expecting it by early next year. And now it seems a lot of the commentary and the think pieces are turning towards how do they execute on the taper and how do they wind it up? Is, is that what we should start focusing now about what the strategy will be and how long uh, the taper will take? So I think that the taper is going to last uh, a couple quarters, actually around three quarters, so that they'll be done by fall of 2022. And I actually think the market should be less focused on the mechanics of the taper and more focused on how is the economy going to look uh, as we move towards the end of the QE program. Is the economy still going to be robust enough to allow the Fed to eventually hike rates? And with that, we would say, yes, we do believe that the economy will be robust enough, that inflation will still likely be above the Fed's target. And it will still be appropriate for the Fed to move forward tightening policy. The question that I hear a lot is, why should the Fed, Fed be tapering at all if growth and inflation are decelerating? And to that, I really look to 2015. December 2015 is the last time that the Fed, or was the, was the last time that they mm. started raising rates. At that time, inflation was 1%, growth was 2%, and the unemployment rate was 5%. Now, think forward to 2022. What are we expecting? We're expecting double the growth, triple the inflation, and an unemployment rate that is probably below 5%, if not closer to 4.5%. So tapering, absolutely appropriate in this economic environment. And reducing accommodation should continue to be appropriate as we look into the second half of next year. You know, um, you mentioned 2015. I believe that's when... Uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, did, you became VP in the Global Fixed Income Group. Before that, you were an analyst, about, uh, uh, an analyst um, on, the, on the tax aware fixed income strategy side. I just read these details in your bio, and it makes me think about the possibility of tax changes, the possibility of legislation um, in terms of you know, trillions of dollars in spending. How does that affect your outlook? I mean, it's not all about the Fed here, right? No, it's not all about the Fed. For once, there's actually fiscal policy to talk about and stimulative fiscal policy to talk about. Uh, so what we're looking at is really this uh, $3.5 trillion uh, uh, reconciliation bill that the Congress is currently looking at. How much of that is deficit funded and how much of that is going to be uh, associated with tax increases or revenue offsets? Because when you think about the impulse to growth, it's going to be not that total number of three and a half trillion, but it's going to be that net number once you consider the revenue offsets, which is primarily going to be tax increases. So we think that there will be some tax increases, but in the end, there's still going to be a lot of this spending, this infrastructure spending, human infrastructure spending, that's going to be deficit financed. And that on net is just another tailwind for the U.S. economy right now.
Kelsey, you only got about a minute left with you, but I did want to ask you before we let you go, in terms of the handoffs that all these nations, the United States, Canada, others, are going to have to manage between fiscal and monetary stimulus to an economy standing on its own two feet. You think that's going to be a success? How delicate an operation will it be? It's a delicate operation, and that's why they need to move slowly, but they also need to start earlier. So the Fed said it in their July minutes. You need to have a risk-managed approach. So we can't just wait until um, inf we're wrong on inflation. If, if inflation turns out to be much higher than we expected and the Fed or the uh, RBA or the Bank of Canada hasn't finished tapering asset purchases, it puts them in a very vulnerable spot. So I agree, it's a delicate balance, but that's why uh, monetary policymakers are moving slowly towards the exit, specifically to manage that risk.